Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today my topic for this video is to model selection for our sentiment analyzer. And in previous video, you see we do the feature selections, feature engineering, so those tasks is done. Now we have the data into the vector forms. Now we have the feature ready. In this uh, video, we will do, we will select, we will do one thing. We will select the base classifiers, base models. And so let me start with, so here, first, so first we need to install the prerequisites here. So you can see here, we installed all the prerequisite here. You can see here, first we import the decision tree classifier, then random forest classifier, add a bush classifier, logistic regression. So first we start with these classifiers to select our base classifier from that. And these are the evaluation metrics from SK lens, F1 score, ROC, UC score, precision score, recall score. So this will, these are score we will use to select our base classifier. And then we call the pipelines because here we are going to use the pipeline. And from this phase, we are moving to the pipelines. And after that, we will make the proper trading pipelines and the production pipelines after this phase. So let me start with the model selections. So here, first we use the logistic regression model. So here we are, we are basically calling the pipeline from the SKLM. So this pipeline we call here. Now we are choosing the classifier as a logistic class regression with default parameters. You can see here, we are not providing any parameter here. So the, basically uh, without any parameter, logistic regression going to use the default parameters. And now we are going to train this logistic regression on our training data. And you can see here is take only 2.98 second. So that's the luxury of the logistic regression. Basically, logistic regression uh, training time complexity is the order of n d and means number of data points, d means uh, dimension of the data points. So in case of low latency systems, like the if we require fast systems, then we most of the company use the logistic regression. And in case of the runtime complexity, also like the order of d's, because in logistic regression we find the weights and weights. We train those weights and in the run times our input data is coming and then multiply and addition with respect to those weights. So that's why the in case of production also response uh, times for the logistic regression is very less. In case of low latency system, we generally prefer the logistic reg regression. So let's uh, check the F1 score and precision. So you can see here, here we are checking the precision score for logistic regression, then AUC score and then F1 scores. So let me check here. So we intensely first check the precision AUC F1 score for the training data, then for the test data to check any kind of overfitting and kind of underfitting. So here you can see like the precision score for logistic regression on training data is 0 0.84. And AUC score is 0 0.92, then F1 score also 0 0.84. And precision score on the test data, you can see here on the test data, 0 0.83 and on the train data 0.84. So there is no major difference. So we can see here, there is uh, no overfitting. So 0.92 is the AU, AUC score, AUC ROC score. And you can see here F1 score is 0.83. And you can see also the overall time taken during this evaluation process is very less, 3.86 seconds. As I told you earlier, also like the runtime complexity also fast in case of logistic regression. So now we achieve the 0.83 F1 score on the test data. While selecting our base model, we are going to use the F1 score for the test data only. And so move to the next classifier is the decision tree. Same techniques we use, same pipeline we use here. We are pulling, uh, now we are pulling the decision tree as a model two, And we are again using the decision tree with default parameters because we are uh, we are not providing any hyperparameter here. Then we are training our decision tree. And you can see here, like the training time is increased. In case, if you remember, in case, let me scroll, scroll down on the logistic regression. In case of logistic regression, our training time is 2.98 second. And now it's changed to one minute, nine second. So if you compare this time, like the uh, decision tree taking the 23, time, 23 times extra time, while training uh, models on same data, same dimension of the data. So, and let's check the precision and recall. So you can see here the precision score of the decision tree on the training data is 0 0.99, very good. 
and ROC is the score is 0 0.99. Again, good F1 score on the training data is 0 0.99. But then you can see one problem here. Precision score on the test data and the AUC score on the test data, F1 score on the test data is decrease. In case of training data, we are receiving the 99%. F1 score, a ROC is a score, precision score, but now the score is in the 70 range. F1 score also precision score. You can see here one problem is the overfit problems because our model is working very well on the training data, but it's not working well on the test data or unseen data. So let's try to fix this one. We, uh, so this is one finding during our model selection. So let's, so let's try to fix this overfitting problem with hyperparameters in the season tree. And we are going to use few hyperparameter. First one is the uh, gain index. Yeah, we have the two options here, gain index and entropy. We are using the gain index here. Then we have the max depth. Max depth is 11. Then we have the mini sample split is two and mini sample split is one. Now let's see if it fix or not. First, we again to retrain our models. So here you can see that the training time also decreased because we decreased the max depth limb, uh, max depth of the decision tree to 11th and also the mean sample limits. And let's see the precision and recall score. So you can see here the precision score on the training, uh, training data set also decreased. So you can see here accuracy also decreased on the training data, but here on the test data so you can see here this is a f1 score on the test data 0 0.71 and on the f1 score on the train data 0 0.74 there is no major difference one uh, so you can see here we fix the overfit problem but now we are facing uh, here the accuracy challenge and we will see uh, we will fix those accuracy challenge during our hyperparameter tuning and assembler techniques but now you can see here we are fixed up the first problem is overfit problem we fix those problem here now move to the random forest classifier and again we are calling a random forest without without any predefined hyperparameter so uh, we are using the random forest with default parameter and so let's train our random forest classifier and it's taking the two minutes so now you can see here now training time again increase if we compare with the logistic regression or even we compare with the decision tree also. So now our time is increasing. And if you compare with the logistic regression is almost 50 times the logistic regression training time. And now we check the precision and uh, F1 score. So precision score on the training data is 0 0.99. Then AUC score on uh, random forest 0 0.99. And fun score on the random forest on our training data is 99. And you can see here like the F1 score on the test data is 0 0.880. And precision score on the test data 0 0.80. So again, we face this overfit problem here with the random forest also. And uh, let's fix this in the, during the hyperparameter tuning. So uh, next move to the ADA boost classifier. Again, we are using the ADA here. We are using ADA boost and now train the ADA boost. And you can see here the training time increase uh, from the random forest to ADA boost also 15 times in, in case. So uh, random forest is taking the around two minutes, 41 seconds. So I think it's uh, increased by five times. Yeah, here from random forest to add a boost and if we compare this with uh, logistic regression then it's 200 times plus increase from the training time if we compare the training time of logistic regression is around the two seconds now we have the 15 minutes for so 43 seconds so almost 16 minutes and let's check the precision and uh, f1 score you can see precision score of add a boost classifier is 0 0.86 AUC score uh, 0 0.94, F1 score on training is 0 0.86. Now let's check the precision score on the test data, 0 0.81. AUC score on the test data is 0 0.88 and F1 score on test data 0 0.84. And now you can see here like the, there is no major difference in ADA boost. We have the, like the 
FMO score on the training data set 0.86 and 0.881 on the test data. So uh, there is uh, there is no class, uh, no overfitting problem here in AdaBoost. Let's do hyperparameter tunings if we find the best classifiers here. So here basically we are pulling the model selection from the SKLearn and matrix and assembling. So first we we create a functions and in this function we are passing uh, passing value classifier parameter grid grid basically in hyperparameter uh, tuning we provided the parameter grid in grid form from those parameter we try to experiment with the combination of those values and in case of best scores we save the parameters from the best scores and in the end you can see here these are the parameters we provide in our uh, methods like the parameter grid matrix and purpose and cross validation pulled value also and then we trained our models and checking the best score here and in the end we we based upon the best score we save our best parameters and in the end we return the best model and best parameters so let's do uh, hyperparameter tuning in logistic regression first because we we achieved the highest score previously 0.83 around 0.83 in logistic regression so let's do hyperparameter tuning with logistic regression and here are the parameter grid and in the parameter grid you can see here we are providing the plenty value plenty value l1 l2 those are the regularization then we are providing the c value c value basically inversely proportional to lambda value to to control our regularization and our generalizations and to uh, to handle the overfitting here and in case of tolerance uh, to check uh, to uh, to set the tolerance criteria we are uh, we are providing here like the grid of different value for, for example 0 0.001 then 0 0.001 then 0 0.01 so these kind of different combinations we are trying then we have the max iterations like number of iterations for uh, for training of our model first 100 then 100, 200 so these are the parameter grid now we are pulling our hyperparameter function from our uh, methods and passing the our classifier as a logistic regression then parameter grid we define here matrix as a accuracy then then the our post value and then cross validation value and after after training you can see here after a lot of trainings you can see like the scores is changing again again so we receive the best score is 0 0.84 here and now we find the best parameter c value is 10 max iteration 200 penalty l2 and tolerance 0 0.001 so and it take around the three minute uh, 12 seconds and so these are again we are printing the f1 scores and all for this fine-tuned logistic regression and that's tuning for the random forest classifier so these are the parameters for the random forest classifier on which we are going to experiment with our grid search. First one is the N estimators. So these are the uh, estimators we are providing into the our classifier. Basically, these are the number of decision trees in our random forest. So first we experiment with 100, then 200, then 300. And max depth is 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. And in case of Caterian, Caterian basically first value is Gini index and then entropy we are experimenting with both. And then mini sample split is three seven eleven, and mini sample leaf is three and five. Max feature is square root or log two. So here basically we are uh, experimenting with these hyperparameter, and now we are pulling this hyperparameter method from over and passing these parameters with random forest classifier. And you can see here we uh, after a lot of trainings and a lot of epochs. You can see okay here are the like we we achieve the best score is 0.82. Now you can see we achieve best score 0.82, and best parameter is the uh, Gini uh, max depth is 23, max feature is log two, minimum leaf five, mini sample split, uh, split is seven, Est number of estimators means number of decision tree in our end of forest is 300, and you can see here is take around two hour. 25 minutes so uh, almost 2.5 hours and so let's check the f1 scores for uh, test data 
for this fine tune classifier, random forest classifier, and now we are achieving the 0.8175 uh, F1 score. And let's select the best model. So here, basically, we are we are comparing um, F1 score for our test data for all classifiers. We, like first is the logistic regression with default parameter, then decision tree with default parameter, decision tree with some hyper parameter, then random forest with default parameter, add a boost with uh, default parameter, then fine tune logistic regression, then fine tune random forest. And in the end, we are printing the best uh, model based upon the best F1 score. And you can see here, we, we achieve the best score, F1 score with fine tune logistic regression classifier. It's providing 0 0.8, 3.8 F1 score. And now I'm moving to the assignment for my learners who are watching this video. So here, basically I'm providing the parameters, different parameter values along with the code. You can run this code on your machine and it will take around nine to seven hour for one models. To fine tune, first you can run this code to fine tune the random forest again with these number of features. These are the number of parameters I have provided here. You just need to run this. You can run this directly on your machine. And if you have the hardware constraints, if you have the machines less than 8 GB, then you can use the Google Collapse also and run the same code on the Google Collapse. And after the trainings of these, like the hyperparameter tuning of these models, then you can try the add a boost also. Uh, so here, uh, this also take around the uh like the nine to ten hours for fine tuning of the like the hyperparameter tuning of this add push classifier so due to the time limitations so in phase four i'm going to start with the our base models as a logistic regression first i will prepare the training pipelines and also the production pipeline with base models and then do the evaluation for the base model with our conclusion matrix AUC, ROC, and i will share all the details in our next phase video and after that, I will move to the explainable AI for our base models uh, on which I use the Shapley and the line to explain the predictions and the featuring contributions. So thank you for watching this video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.